Welcome back to Combat Mission, where we are looking into the scenario editor. In the first episode of this series, we did some of the groundwork for our scenario that we want to make. So we're going to have a US Army Rifle Platoon showcase. We're going to show off its firepower, essentially. So this means that our map is pretty much going to be a big shooting gallery. We're going to have the US Army Platoon uh, the blue player basically at one end and then we're going to have targets for the rifle squads infantry targets at two to three hundred meters and getting closer inside effective small arms range then we need some targets for the m240s in the platoon they're going to be a little bit further away maybe four to five hundred meters and then beyond all that we need something for the javelin to blow up and that's going to be a tank something like that at say 600 meters all this stuff we can make it closer if we want so that's given us a broad idea of how big we want our map to be we want a shooting range of about 600 meters in total and then we're going to need some space for the blue player to actually do stuff have a safe area he can operate in so that's probably going to be about another 100 meters deep so we want it to be 700 meters long so to actually look at the terrain we need to go into this drop down menu up here and select map and this gives us a top down 2d representation of the terrain at the moment it's all brown because it's shock force and the default terrain is dirt it's also covered in a grid these are 8 by 8 meter squares this is how the game works out its terrain essentially so each of these squares, if I change, these are different types, some of the different types of the terrain we have over here. If we change to red dirt and we click there, now we have a red dirt tile surrounded by all this normal dirt. So the size of the map is up here in the top right in this, in this section. So it's currently 320 by 320. And we have these buttons on either side of each of the uh, width and depth. And if we click on them, it adds rows of uh, grid squares on. Uh, so two, two rows at a time, so it goes up by 60 meters. And if we push on this button, it expands the width to the left. If we click on the little minus underneath it, it brings it back. We want about 700 meters in depth, so let's just go ahead and keep clicking that until we hit about 700 meters. Obviously, these are all going to be multiples of 16. Okay, so now we've got a long thin map. And it's actually so big, uh, we can't quite see all of it. So this uh, second section from the right at the top, this is just your zoom function. So if we go this way, you know, the squares are getting bigger because we're zooming in, we zoom out. Okay, now we can see our whole map. It's a little bit archaic, but you get used to it. So, um, obviously, it's quite difficult when we're zoomed in at a useful level we, where we can see things to tell where we are. So let's get some markers in. In fact, let's build up the skeleton of our map. Uh, and we can do that by putting roads in. We have all these options for stuff we can put on our map over here. So if we go to roads and we find, let's say dirt roads, let's say we're out in the sticks. Zoom in a bit. And get ourselves down to the bottom. And we can start putting uh, roads in. So our first marker, we want 100 meters. That's going to be the limit of our blue player's deployment zone, essentially. So if we look in the bottom left, uh, down here in this area which won't show up while I'm poking it like that but there we go we've got X and Y coordinates in the meters these are measured from the bottom left hand corner down here so this is how I know I'm actually at the bottom of the map uh, and if we go up here let's get to a Y of about 100 and we can put a bit of road in so that's not very good because it's facing the wrong way we can change uh, the type of road here, so we have the dirt road, gravel road, paved, etc. And then underneath it, we have the different tiles that it could be. So it's kind of like um, putting a board game together almost. We have straight lines, corners, 
y junctions, t junctions, crossroads, etc., etc. And we can change the direction of the tiles by using this uh, bit on the left up here. Uh, but you can also, if you hold Control and right click, automatically cycle through them, which is so much easier. And I wish I'd known that years ago. So let's put in our horizontal road across here. Cool. There we go. Nice and easy. And uh, another reason why I want the uh, blue plate at the bottom of the map here is so that it's easy for me to measure the ranges because I can just use the Y coordinate. Uh, and if we go into 3D preview up here in the top left, we load a bit. Uh, the camera pops in always in the, uh, at the zero coordinates and boom, we have our map and we have our road. Which is pretty boring right now, but we're just getting started, aren't we? Uh, also, in terms of the width of the map, uh, I haven't changed that. We're 320 meters across. That's enough room for a platoon. Uh, in these circumstances. We don't need to do a lot of maneuvering here. If we do anything, we're going straight up the map. So we can press uh, escape to get out of that. So now let's go up to, we want another 200 meters for our first section, don't we? So let's go up until we're at Y300, because we've got the 100 already. I'll put a little marker there so I can get it. Uh, this time, we're going to go straight across, but we're going to use um, this tool here. So this is the other option uh, when you're putting linear tiles down. Uh, with this, uh, the double-ended arrow, you click on where you want it to start and then uh, you go across and you click on where you want it to finish and it just draws the whole thing in which is a little bit easier. This can get a bit weird when you're trying to do diagonals. Um, there are question marks about how much, uh, how well combat mission really represents diagonal roads and things. Personally, I prefer them to be straight or to have corners rather than to zigzag like that. That's personal preference. Uh, and we're only doing like a quick overview here, so I'm not going to get into the whole uh, massive amounts of uh, things you can do with them. So let's uh, put another road in at. Uh, what was that? That was at 300. We want another 300. So let's put it in at about. Now nah, that's too far, isn't it? Let me think. Uh, let's whack it in at 500. Uh, and there you go. There's me with my muscle memory there. And because I forgot to just explain it, um, if you make a mistake, like I have done there, uh, you can just right click on it to delete it. Uh, or you can click the non icon up there. Uh, so we've got our three three levels. So we have the US down here, we have the first group of enemies uh, in this area, the second group of enemies in this area. So this is 500 meters of the map, but only 400 meters away from the blue start line, which is where I'm going to set it up. So that's where the U US player is going to do their fighting. That is a little bit closer than I was saying earlier, but at the same time, it's still a long way. It's beyond effective small arms range and within the effective range envelope of the N240. So that's going to be fine. Uh, so we just kind of have like a, a map with some lines in it right now. Let's jazz it up slightly and put a, say, let's go to about 100 meters and then put another road in up here. Uh, this is just to add in uh, a little bit of extra interest. Uh, plus, we can do some other stuff with it later. So obviously, when we went over the um, horizontal roads, we deleted the tile and replaced it. So what we need to go back to here is get the crossroads tile and pop that in on top. Uh, like that. Now if we go into the 3D preview, we have a map with this grid on it, essentially. So that's cool. It's still pretty boring. Uh, so let's think about this. We, we're going to make this, this is kind of open agricultural kind of land, right? So 
one of um, the features there are, well, it's crops, right? Ag agricultural land. Let's turn this into a plowed field. So we have um, in the second group of ground tiles we can put in, we have plow north, south and east, west. Uh, let's go north, south. Why not? So if we put these tiles in here, uh, we're changing that to a plowed field. And it's going to take a while to do it like this. So we can change this, the size of our paintbrush, essentially, with these buttons up here. We can go a bit bigger. Uh, we can go even bigger. Uh, and then we can do the big one. Obviously, that's a lot quicker. Let's dive into the app again. And boom, now we have a great big plowed field set up there. Cool. That is a bit flat, isn't it? So let's, um, another feature that we get from uh, this kind of agricultural terrain out in the Middle East is we get berms. So let's put the road, this, um, let's say this is the main road on the left, and these are just like access roads. In fact, let's change it to a more impressive road so we can tell the difference. So. Uh, let's say uh, a gravel road because it's not that good so we can just go straight down and just overwrite it like that stick a cross section in uh, and let's cheat a bit and use that tool and try not to draw a huge line of intersections cool so let's go double check that it's always really important to keep just keep going in and checking everything which is another reason why it's kind of usually good to work with smaller maps uh, so that you can easily jump in and out now uh, this has a a little ditch built in on the side you can kind of just it's kind of tough to see uh, but it is there, it's on the dirt roads as well. But let's let's make that more interesting. Let's put a drainage ditch in. So we also have these uh, walls, fences, and ditches. Let's do the ditch. And we're just going to put a ditch in on either side. Um, of the main road there. Well, cool. let's go check that. Cool. So now, now, that's a bit more visually distinct for the player, uh, and they have some cover they can use. Uh, but if we look at this bit of terrain here, I mean, the farmer's not going to plow the irrigation ditch. Um, that would be a bit daft. So let's turn that back into dirt. Let's bring that right back down there. Cool. Now, uh, let's next we need to raise it up. So if we go to elevation, each of the squares in the grid has an elevation value. It defaults to 20. Uh, and obviously, uh, we want to change that to jazz things up. So you can adjust all of all of the um, the elevations, which I never use. You can adjust them by a specific amount as the controls and the instructions are on like the left here so we can increase a spot by five personally I never use these two and I only use the direct height so you use the plus and minus keys to raise and lower um, the height and you just push say we want to set it to uh, 22 that's a fairly mid-sized berm two meters high and we put that on there you can see everything has changed to 22. That's because the game doesn't have any other reference points. Well, we want the fields to be down at 20. So if we do that, you can see it's the numbers are changing. So let's put a solid 20 down the side of the, the road like this. Unfortunately, you do kind of have to do them all which can be a bit of a pain.
especially on the bigger maps. So I'm, I'm just doing this to make sure that the fields are flat and not weirdly bumpy. And now if we make the road in the middle 22 meters, you go all the way up there like that. Boom, now we can see we've got the road is up on a berm. It's at 22 meters. On either side, we've got the ditch, which is at 21. And then the fields on the other sides are at 20. So if we 3D preview again, cool, we've got a berm with a road on it. That's a lot more interesting than it just being flat. And we see that the terrain is automatically adjusted in the middle and made in elevation. So that's a bit more interesting. Let's do the same thing with the other rows, uh, but make them make make them just at 21. So if we bring that across like that, we can always change this stuff up later. It's not. You know, it's not setting stone. Uh, but elevation can... It can do weird things sometimes. Uh, because it, you know, it's got a formula and it calculates what height things should be. And sometimes it does, uh, it does things you're not expecting. Let's get that all across on that one and that one and let's look again and yeah we've got a bit of an elevation there. Uh, in fact come to think of it I've been a bit of a potato. Uh, we should really make this two meters high because we want blue to have a safe deployment zone and a berm that's two meters high is slightly taller than your average soldier uh, and that means that they're not going to get shot before the game starts. Uh, so let's go back in and fix that. Uh, so one thing we could do here is uh, if we hold control, I've set the height to 22, if we hold control uh, and run it along you can see now that it's blue and this gives it the, this is essentially for making ditches. And it means that it has a, uh, the incline is steeper on it. So now we can see that that is a bit, if we compare the two verbs, a bit steeper than the other one. Except I've done the wrong one, haven't I? I've got it mixed up. I did the one at the top end because I'm a genius. Let's go have a look at that. I was wondering why that didn't look different. Uh, yeah, there we go. So now it's like basically on a bit of a wall. Uh, and that's really useful in some circumstances. Here it looks a little bit daft. Uh, so let's uh, just change that back to uh, your normal 22. And what we're going to do to solve it is if we get rid of, again, we're just going to use the num key. And you can see as I'm deleting them, all the numbers are changing. Uh, we're going to whack that back to 20 and then have the same kind of burn that we have going up the left. And let's not forget to do the other side. And actually remember to do it down here as well. That would be smart. Oh. 
let's put a 20 back in there so it doesn't mangle the whole thing. Uh, yep, there we go. Uh, so yeah, now our American soldiers can start off not being shot at by the enemy from across the map. Uh, how else can we make this feature interesting, this road then? Well, um, if he's got the irrigation ditches right, it's probably going to be not dirt, because it's irrigated. So let's uh, stick some grass on it. Uh, of course, you may have just noticed, we've gone back to the uh, terrain tiles and all the numbers for the elevations are gone. Now that can be a bit of a pain. Uh, but if we press the E key, we can bring them back. Uh, so let's put some uh, grass on the road. Uh, just dead simple. You know, it's another visual kind of indicator to the player. Now if we preview it, boom, now we have a kind of grassy burn. Uh, and you know what? Actually, that doesn't look great, does it? So let's get rid of that. Uh, it's always worth just you can always try things out and chop and change and then just delete the stuff that you don't like. So how are we going to make it more interesting uh, if that looked a bit weird? Well, let's let's wang some trees on it. So for trees, we have all these different types of trees uh, and the bushes. Uh, down here, we have these uh, options for how they go in. So you can put one tree at a time, two trees at a time, or three trees at a time. This is per square. Uh, so if I do, um, let's say, oh, let's do it at the bottom, shall we? So I don't need to move the camera so far. Let's do uh, one, two, and three, like that, so we can demonstrate. Boom, we've got some trees. Now, because we had a road in this tile, or in these tiles, the trees don't go on the road because obviously uh, so they popped up on either side if we did it um, down here they're all you know much more randomly scattered about so that's something to bear in mind uh, of course those are randomly scattered uh, this fourth option here with the grid on it um, allows you to uh, do auctions and things, have more reliable placement because it just puts the tree slap bang in the middle of whatever square it's in. So if I change that to the same thing but not on the grid, um, which is very confusing because uh, it's got the same icon, <laughs> uh, so that's the same thing but randomized. Yeah, so etc. So let's uh, let's swang some trees uh, up and down the road. Uh, just fairly random. Uh, and let's go back and we'll change a couple of those into doubles just to jazz it up a little bit. Uh, we go back again, double check, and yeah, we've got a tree-lined road on a berm with ditches on either side. Cool. That'll do with that for now. Um, this is a bit boring though. There's just one big field, so let's change that. Uh, let's put uh, an orchard in on one side. Okay, so when we when we think about the 
the mission uh, and the scenario, uh, what we're wanting is we're going to have some enemy troops try and get closer to the player's force down here. Uh, because we want them to get to a closer range so the Americans can show off how effective their weaponry is. Uh, which is great, uh, but it would be kind of silly for them to just run across an open field, right? So let's put an auction in. Make sure I'm only putting one leading tree in at once, and we can just do every other square. And just whack a load of trees in. Of course, uh, one way we could do this, which may be faster, I'm not sure, uh, we could cover the whole thing and then just delete the lines. Uh, in fact, let's do that uh, for the last bit. If we, uh, there's our orchard, set ourselves to none, and then we can just. Uh, zip down here like that. You know, I'm not sure if that is faster, but whatever. It's slightly more gratifying. W whenever I'm like making a map, I usually have a podcast or something on at the same time, you know, so, so you have something to listen to because it's not necessarily. It can be a bit of a grind sometimes. Uh, I, I accidentally deleted a couple of trees there, but that, that's fine. Orchards tend not to be perfect, so let's uh, pop in. Boom! Now we've got an orchard over on this side. Um, it doesn't look great though. It's a bit boring. There's these trees just growing out of the dirt. So, yeah, let's. Now we can put some grass in. Uh, we, let's put some strips of grass down uh, from where the farm has been irrigating his trees. And actually, you know what, in those gaps, let's put some bushes uh, and they're going to stand in for a small, not smaller, uh, what's a good way to put it, um, younger trees. Cool. Yeah, that looks a lot more interesting. Um, it's maybe the wrong type of tree, but we can mess around with that later. Uh, so we're going to have, uh, you know, the Americans around here uh, shooting at red forces, attacking them through this little auction. So it's this isn't going to mess with sight lines too much. Uh, but it makes a bit more sense than them just running across the field. And, you know, we're adding little bits of interest that make it make the map look more appealing and a bit more realistic. So uh, something else we could do is that's just grass, isn't it? That's kind of boring. So if we, we have some tall grass, we can put that in. Little random bits of taller grass. Uh, here and there, and we can put some weeds in uh, because you know there's a war on, and maybe the farmers had to go off and uh, get conscripted or join the insurgents or have a party because whatever. So, if we do that, and through the preview now, yeah, now it's even more you know visually interesting. And it, it makes sense in the context, right? Uh, yeah, so something else we can do while we're doing this, and something that's quite important to do while doing this, is if we swap into units. Now, this is just like the four selector screen in the, in the quick battles. And we add in um, uh, like a JTAC team purely because it's the smallest thing you can put in. Uh, this is really useful when you're building the map because if we do go to this deploy thing we can set them up and yeah, we can just move them around like we would do in any other deployment uh, but we can start checking how uh, the pixel trap and uh, deal with the terrain so with this road here which is our like our limit of blues 
uh, Blue's deployment at the start, where we're expecting Blue to do most of the fighting from. Uh, well, it's a road, and uh, um, it's a lateral road across the front of them, and the Pixel Trapper will lie down, sometimes on the right side, but you know they might be on the other side as well. That's, that's going to be a bit awkward for us. So we might need to mess with this little burr uh, to give the Pixel Trapper fewer opportunities to do stupid things, should we say. Uh, so especially if we look here, um, we can also check the line of sight that they get. So yeah, let's uh, hop back out, go back to the map, and let's let's do what we did with the main road and put some ditches in, uh, because you know that way. Oh, in fact, actually, let's just put one ditch in. So it's it's a bit harder for the player to go to the wrong place. Uh, so now we also need a uh, a corner. Uh, so let's pop a corner on that bit of ditch there, uh, and pop that ditch in. Let's go back and check. Uh, yeah, that looks cool, except for the fact uh, that the player, the Pixel Trapper, are going to be down in that ditch and they can't see over it. Hapless, you idiot. Uh, so yeah, we better actually put one on the other side as well in case we need to do that. Oh, let's just cheat. Uh, and of course we got dirt in our... Uh, we got plowed field in our ditch again, so let's delete that and check with the JTAC team. So yeah, as like I was saying, um, if they're in that ditch they can't see into the field. If they're in that, that ditch, uh, they can. So that's great, but it's a bit awkward uh, going across like that, so we might need to actually either raise up the orchard. Bas basically we need the ditch uh, and the road to basically be at the same height. Uh, so it makes a little bit more sense uh, in terms of field of fire. So we could raise the auction up and have that being slightly taller or we could get the road, make the road a little bit lower. And I think um, we'll make the road a bit lower. Uh, so if you make the road um, just parallel to where the uh, just where the orchard is, we make that a bit lower, and then it's going to raise up slightly. So this should make a bit more sense. Uh, yeah, like that. Cool. That makes sense. And this gives us a problem that we've. Now got a slightly sm uh, smaller deployment zone, so this area is now a lot less safe for the Americans. But there's still this kind of right angle area here, which you could easily fit a platoon in. So that's fine. Or we could have uh, the deployment zone uh, restrained to the ditches. That would also make some sense. Uh, speaking of, um, let's. Uh, we're going to need a position where the M240s and the Javelin can set up where they have quite a good view. So let's put a, a little compound in on this corner here, uh, which means we're going to deal with ditches, not ditches, buildings. Same thing really. Uh, so first of all, let's uh, have a raised area of terrain here. Uh, this is where our little compound is going to be. Uh, that might be a little bit big. Let's put it on there, like that. Uh, and ditch the stuff in the middle. And make sure the field is still, you know, field sized.
around it. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, it's also going to look a bit weird if we have a ditch in the middle of it. Let's turn that elevation back on. So yeah, those 22s, let's, let's get rid of the ditch. Uh, and instead we can put a wall in. So let's have a, uh, oh, wrong one. That's interesting. There we go. Uh, let's just have a, like a little compound. There on that corner and let's put some uh, put some walls in it. Oh, wrong one. There we go. I'll put some little doors so people can get in and out. There we go, let's go have a look at that. Yeah, there we go, that looks like a compound to me. Uh, so now we have a bit of a raised position for the... Uh, for that compound, let's put some buildings in it. So buildings are in this tab here, and they're basically determined by height, uh, apart from the rubbled one, which basically has no height. So. Um, Let's have a one-story building, and then we have all these bits represent different footprints. So the smallest building you can have is still an 8x8 eight eight building, which is pretty chunky. Uh, let's put one in and rotate it. Uh, the white line is uh, where the doors are. Uh, let's put that in like that, and we'll put a two-story one next to it. So we have a little little bit of a farmhouse kind of thing going on there. Right, let's have... Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's okay, isn't it? Uh, but, we have a kind of a bit of dead space around the edge, and I don't think someone... You know, why, why would you bother? Uh, so let's uh, delete all them and delete a bit of the wall and we'll put uh, the building right actually up against uh, and incorporate it into the walls. Uh, that's going to make it look a bit more compound like. So there we go, there's uh, one And if we do that and put the two story in next to it like that. Cool, that looks a bit more like a compound. We got some more doors. Um, they're slightly different textures though. They're definitely different textures to the brick wall. So what we can do is we can change the building textures by holding shift and clicking and yeah, that's the same texture as the wall, right? So let's uh, let's use that one. So it looks a bit more cohesive. Cool. Now something we also might not want is um, these exterior doors. Let's turn the shadows off. Ah, shaders. That's what I mean. Make sure this is a little bit easier to see. So uh, we can change how many doors and windows we have in the face of the building. So if we hold uh, left control and click, we can change that up. So let's just have a load of windows on there. Uh, that's fine. Uh, that's... Yeah, uh, let's, get, let's take the door out of that. Cool. And something that's always worth checking is if we clip inside the building, uh, let's make sure we have a wall, uh, sorry, have a door, so we can go from one building to the other like that. Uh, what else might we need? Uh, roof, uh, rooftop walls. If we shift click on the roof, we change the color because I pushed the wrong button. If we uh, do control and click on the roof, we can put a wall on top. That'll do. Uh, let's not do it that one, let's leave that one there. So now we have a bit of a compound uh, that we can occupy and from up there uh, we should be able to see um, 
across the map and shoot things up from a great distance. That's cool. Right. Um, it's a bit boring in there though, isn't it? So let's put some um, let's put some fancy pavement tiles in. Uh, and see maybe uh, maybe a bit of a bit of grass. Have someone who really likes their uh, their little garden in there. I've put some palm trees in and yeah let's give them a uh, a bit of access off the road like that yeah that'll do let's uh, deploy the JTAC team again uh, get them over there Okay, that doesn't look that much more interesting, but that's that's a job for flavor objects. Um, yeah, that's cool. They can see a really long way. That's fine. Uh, they can see you okay from up there. If we get them on the ground floor, they can see you fine. Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, actually, let's let's make that a little instead of having random palm trees let's make that into like a little little like fruit orchard or something that that should be a bit more interesting emphasis on a bit but yeah that'll do uh, and let's this field at the back is getting pretty looking pretty boring isn't it so let's so let's uh, let's put some crops in it. Let's do uh, crop four. Why not? Let's go around the edge just to give a bit of a buffer zone, and then we can just fill that up with crop number four. Uh, and yeah, let's say on the other side, let's do crop number five. Or six, even. Oh, let's double check that again. Yeah, now it's starting to look a lot more interesting and a lot more lived in. Uh, what else can we do? Well, um, having another road here like that, uh, that's a bit boring, isn't it? So let's, let's change that. Let's have a proper irrigation ditch. Let's put some water in. Uh, now, water can be a bit weird. Uh, we have water, which is totally impassable, except to amphibious vehicles. Reeds are impassable to everything, because presumably amphibious vehicles get eaten by the reeds. Shallow fords are passable by uh, vehicles and infantry, so they're basically just difficult terrain. And deep fords are only passable by infantry. You'd think it would be just vehicles, but no just infantry. So let's uh, make, let's put a shallow ford in because we want to be able to cross it. We don't want really any barriers to movement here and let's uh, just stick that in where that road is. Now this isn't deleting the road and I assume this is because um, that way you can have fords. It's going to look pretty weird if we have a, um, a road running through the length of it like that so uh, and we can get rid of that junction there now water does interesting things with elevation it is always at the lowest elevation in the game in the on the map which in this case is 20 so these fields which are at elevation 20 are a little bit inundated. In fact, that just looks weird, and I've honestly never seen it do that before. Um, I suspect it might be because I have the 21 elevation in it there, like that. Um, uh, let's see if that's 
But uh, yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like. So you can see that sheet of water is now underneath the map. Uh, and it's occupying uh, slightly lower than the, the lowest point. Um, but again, we need to start tweaking things, right? Because you know, the farmer's not going to plow right down to the ditch and he's not going to plant his trees right next to it. Uh, there's probably going to be a little bit of a berm along the side of it. Uh, so what we could do here is we could go back to having that steep ditch. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Uh, just just on that section. Uh, and if we make sure we have the 20 on the other side, we should have a little embankment for our irrigation canal. Okay, yeah, that just looks weird, doesn't it? Let's not do that. Uh, but yeah, we got the got the embankment in the other bits. So let's get rid of the ditch lock there, uh, and we should get rid of uh, these trees along the edge. But uh, again, there's actually water um, here on the edge of this the the ditch. Uh, the ditch, the uh, the drainage canal. So it makes sense for us to put some uh, some grass there because you know it, that's where it's it's going to grow. So we'll add some tall grass in here and there. Uh, add some more weeds in just to jazz it up. Uh, and we can add some more trees in. Let's uh, let's whack more palm trees in. Uh, mostly because they're not going to interfere too much with our line of sight. Some stands of three and two, and then uh, sort the rest out with that, like that. So now we should have a fairly, yeah, there we go, that looks all right. Uh, we've got a bit of a ditch uh, with some irrigation. Now this, this looks a bit weird. Uh, We've got just kind of a causeway uh, going over the canal. So let's uh, let's get rid of that and let's put a bridge in. So to get rid of it, uh, simple as, we just need to put the ford in. Uh, and we'll delete the road. That's going to delete it. Um, so now we should have just a gap. Uh, yep, that's cool. And um, if we want to put a bridge in, we need to go down to the bridges uh, in this section here. So what we have, um, we have two pages of bridges in Shockforce 2. And you generally get the, the type of construction. So wood, steel, stone, uh, concrete, urban, etc. Uh, and then uh, the number is how long the bridge is. So 60 meters. 32, 56. Uh, there's some really long ones out there. Every now and again. And then um, the F stands for foot, so a footbridge, so a very narrow one. And then the R stands for rail, so you can have rail bridges, foot bridges, and road bridges. Um, we've only got a small gap, so we're probably going to be okay with the stone 16 there. Uh, and we can put it in uh, straight. An angle, and then we have uh, destroyed versions. So if we put a uh, destroyed version in, no, that's just the normal one, like that. Uh, 16, yeah, so it's 16 long, which is two squares, but it's centered in a square. So it's occupies one square and half of the others, if that makes sense. So if we hop in to take a look at that. There we go, there's a bridge. And that has kind of synced up quite nicely. Uh, bridges can be a bit awkward sometimes because if you go to the elevation, it's quite important to make sure that uh, the bits on either side where they join up are the same height. 
otherwise various weird stuff can happen and it starts looking a bit weird but uh that's cool um the uh canal bank still looked a little bit empty so something we can do to make it look a bit more overgrown is we can add uh forest tiles which are like forest undergrowth so if we put uh some undergrowth under the uh multiple stands of trees Uh, that's gonna look a bit more like things are a bit overgrown and then we also have this uh, thing called brush now brush kind of adds in um, a little you know small small ground cover not not enough to actually be considered proper undergrowth but like little little bushes and bigger plants and stuff like that and brush usually goes on top of other tiles uh, it doesn't go over all of them, so I can't put it over the um, the ploughed field because that wouldn't make any sense. Uh, so if we go back, yeah, so there you go. That looks a bit more overgrown. That's cool. Uh, so you can see the difference here. The forest tiles have a bit of ground, uh, like uh, brown ground cover underneath, and they have some bushes. And then in the tile next door, that's brush. So that's just a couple of small ones. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's uh, oh, let's put something else in this field here. Um, different crops. Yeah, let's put some different crops in. Uh, crop number one. That should jazz that up. In fact, let's go all the way up this uh, this side here. Let's leave that one as dirt and say it's it's not cultivated. Uh, so this field here, this area here, this is where we're going to have our final little uh, enemy position that we might want to assault. So let's uh, let's put a, another compound in. Right, so let's just do the same thing as we did before, uh, but let's put it in the middle this time. Uh, boom, there we go. And we'll adjust that like that, that's cool. And put another wall in. Uh, let's actually put a proper uh, uh, a proper road in, not just there. Not just a little entrance. Uh, and we'll make a little roundy bounty thing. And whack some buildings in. Uh, so this is something that our player can go and clear. Anyway, let's get rid of that wall on that side. In fact, let, yeah, let's do the same thing there. Oh, no. Uh, one thing that the game doesn't have that would be awesome would be an undo button. Uh, let's just move these buildings uh, down. There, a little bit. And put some, oh, I don't know, gravel. A bit of gravel in there. Well, let's go have a look at that, see if that looks okay. Yeah, that's cool. 
That's a nice little target compound. And uh, actually all the buildings came out with the same uh, texture. That's always nice. That'll do. That's cool. Uh, what else? Uh, what else can we add in for this? Ba, 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 ba. Uh, yeah, we could make our own field. Uh, so obviously you have all the different crops and things, but we could also let's have a like a yellow grass field uh, in this kind of area. Um, So something uh, that is quite a popular feature of, agri of like agriculture in these regions is uh, strip ag agriculture. So you get um, long, thin fields. Uh, let's leave one as dirt, put some actual crops in just to jazz it up. Uh, so you know th this is kind of a uh, this this is a a thing as it were. Cool, and then we can uh, just jazz that field up. Uh, we can put some tall yellow grass in the short one, and we can put some short yellow grass in the other one. Uh, and over here, uh, let's put another orchard in. So same deal, uh, foliage uh, on a grid. Uh, let's use some different trees. And just go like that. But slightly more competently. You get the idea. And this one, let's do it slightly differently. Let's just put some weeds around the bottom of each one. Hmm. Actually, no. Let's do the uh, let's do heavy for light forest. So this is something uh, I've seen in other maps, and it looks pretty cool actually. So let's do that, and we can put some grass in the middle. Uh, which we can spice up with the weeds. Cool, let's uh, jump in and take a look. So that's our next section of field. Um, yeah, that's that's okay. Uh, might, um, you can see the plowing on this crop is going uh, horizontal and this is going vertical. So we might swap that to the vertical. Uh, sorry, to the horizontal furrows. That auction looks pretty good, actually. Here, you can't really tell the difference between one field and another, so let's stick some dirt in there um, as a divider like we did with the other bit. That's cool. And where's my uh, east-west plowing? There we go. That is quite difficult. That's messing with my head a bit. Those textures are kind of similar but different. Ugh. Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, and then up here, um, you know what? Let, let's get into the crappy uh, dirt. You know, too much bother to really um, cultivate. So we have, you know, just various different bits of dirt. Let's stick some hard ground in. Uh, let's put some of the other hard ground in. Uh, let's put a few bits of rocks and just generally make it uncultivatable, horrible land. Uh, with, um, on the other side here, um, oh, I don't know. Let's just put some dirt strips in. Uh, 
Uh, like, we're trying to irrigate it, but we're not quite there yet. Cool, let's, let's eyeball that, see how that looks. Uh, yeah, that looks okay. That, yeah, in fact, that looks pretty good, I think. So, you know, quite quickly, we've got a, we've gone from having a completely blank map to something that looks okay. You know, it looks uh, believable. We've got our uh, sight lines, if we look at this. So if uh, uh, we have our MT-40s up here, they can shoot at that farmhouse over there. Uh, we have our blue rifle squads in the ditches here. They can massacre whoever comes across. Uh, if we need to go up, we can flank up this way. Uh, we have a slightly more interesting field boundary here with the irrigation ditch. Uh, one thing that is striking me, actually, is that my intention was kind of when that tank turns up, let's have it turn up on the road because it's higher up. Um, and we'll be able to see it from all the way. And it makes sense for the vehicle to appear on the road, right? Uh, and I've kind of blinded off uh, this position here uh, by putting that orchard in. So we might go back and change those um, to smaller trees. I think that's a smaller tree. It can be a, a bit of a nightmare telling these icons apart sometimes. Whoop. Uh, uh, but I did, I still did like quite like that tree. So let's uh, change uh, that one over. We're basically, just swapping the orchards here. Um, so the the point here is that, that there needs to be a dialogue between the terrain on the map and the gameplay. Um, obviously, there's uh, maximum leeway for that here because I'm just making whatever I want. If you are doing a historically accurate map and you're basing this off, you know, an actual piece of terrain, um, you might be a lot more constrained. Ah, yeah, see, there we go. Now we can see the road again. Perfect. Uh, you know, be, you know, considerably more constrained by the whole, um, well, I don't want to put that there because it wasn't there in real life. In real life. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. That, I think, covers about everything. What else? Have we got anything in here that I haven't put in? Uh, flavor objects, um... Yeah, I feel like they deserve their own. Uh, I'm not a f not a fan of using them. They look good, but actually getting them to do what I want is a bit of a pain. Um, setup zones we can cover um, when we go onto the forces. And yeah, oh craters, craters. You just stick on the map, right? Um, let's put some craters up here. So if we have some uh, medium, random craters like that. There's a super-sized one, some huge ones, um, lots of tiny ones. In this blasted wasteland um, on the other side of the map where the bad guys are. Um, yeah, you know, uh, doesn't look that bad actually. So craters, you know, usually um, you can put like wrecked vehicles by them from the forces tab and things like that to make it, you know, make it look like there's been a bit of a battle already. Uh, Damage buildings that are nearby, things like that. Uh, in fact, yeah, let's do that as the last thing. Let's get rid of all that crap. There we go. Uh, and put a um, this compound that we're going to be targeting. Let's say it's already been hit. Uh, by something. Uh, so let's say there's a, a great big massive chock off hole um, there. So that means let's uh, hop in and look. 
So we've got a great big crater there. Uh, so let's uh, blow out the front of this building like that. There we go. So again, we're talking about things making sense. There's a crater. There's going to be damage nearby. So we could also go in um, and change that to say, um, you know, a rocky tile. And uh, you know what? Let's let's punch it up a bit uh, to say elevation three. And then, you know, that crater is kind of, uh, oh, that doesn't look great, does it? Let's put the big rocks on it. Um, heavy rocks, where are my heavy rocks? There we go. And so it's my elevation. Let's up, ditch lock the other bits on the other side, see if that looks good. A lot of this is just experimentation, you know, just messing around till it looks good. Uh, yeah, that looks alright-ish, I guess. Uh, it looks like there's a bit more debris around. We can let's put some more heavy rocks like all around it, like that. Cool. That's more. That's more like it. That looks like it's being schwacked by something. Um, oh yeah, final thing. Let's make sure we have a door. Uh, between those buildings. No, 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 wrong one. That's... Yeah, a door and a window. That'll do. Cool. Uh, again with the wrong button. Let's put a. Yeah, there we go. Let's put some. That'll do. Uh, yeah, so there we go. We've kind of built our map. We're going to have to see uh, if any of these bits need changing as we go. Because, um, like I say, we want to integrate the gameplay and what we want to do with our scenario. But hopefully, uh, this little bit of a quick overview has helped uh, explain how bits of the editor work, how to get it to do what we want, and uh, all the little things that you can do. There is obviously more, but this is a good, you know, coming out with a map like this, this is perfectly fine, and we're going to be adding to and tweaking it as we go. So, I uh, hope you all enjoyed this video, uh, and I will catch you in the next one.